So now the last set of instructions before we get to some real programming. The counters. What can counters do? Hmm. They count. I've created a new project called counters. I've created also this new scene. And uh, what I put on this scene. So we have four buttons, count up button, it will increment the counters that we're going to use, count down buttons, decrementing the counters, load value, I will explain you later, reset button, and also the lights, counter up light, counter down light, and counter value. When it comes to counter value, I want to show you the configuration. I'm going to use the integer. So it's going to, to show the, the integer. And how I did it in the driver, I connected count up button, count down button, load value, reset button, and count up light, count down light, counter value. All right, let's go back here. Uh, so I've also created the tag table with all the necessary tags. So everything is already there. And let's get to counters. So many times in your program, you will have to count something. So every time some event happens, you have to count this event. Okay, it's not something that you use all the time, but they are there very often in the programs. So Again, where do you go? As always, to instructions. Oh, I've got it open here because I uh, I tested it before. Anyway, when it's all collapsed, there here counter operations, and we have three different counters here, and I'm going to show you all of them. So let's start with the counter up. So just like with the timers it wants to create an instance DB and because it has to store the memory somewhere. Like what's the current value of the counter, for example. So I'm calling it CTU IDB. Why? Because it's counter up CTU IDB for instance data block. Okay. And it's created here in the in the project tree. So what should be on the input? Of course, count up button. So I'm just connecting the, the input button directly here. I've called the tag CU button for count up. On the output, we will have counter up light. I'm adding a coil here and PV. What is a PV? Uh, you can have a look in, in the help as always. If you don't know what some input is for, the best way to find out is to click this block, press F1, and it's going to tell you. And in this case, I'm going to tell you, this is the value that when counter reaches it, it will enable the output will switch the output on. So let's count to five. All right, I'm just typing five here and counter value here. We don't have to connect anything here, but I want to connect the this output so that we can observe it on this panel here. We can also observe it. We can also observe it, for example, in the IDB. But well, I want to make it as simple as possible for you to understand. So counter value. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, and it's very important actually. So I'm going to the definition to show you what I did. So go to, and what I've done, I've created the output QD100. Why is it? D and why is it not Q with something dot zero? This is because to have an output as a number, in this case, 
we have to use more than just one bit. In this case, we're going to use a double word. D word stands for double word. This is also what the driver requires. This output here is double int QD100. I've configured it like this, so it's so factory IO is going to require a double word. So I'm going to send the double word from, from here. So um, there's actually a lot to say about analog inputs and analog outputs compared to digital inputs and digital outputs. But to be honest, it's much more extensive topic and I'm going to talk about it more in the course that I'm working on. So we've got this output, I've used QD100, which this D stands here for, for double word. And now let's go to the program. Okay, so we've got count up button connected, the input, counter up light, uh, the output, and let's also add the reset. And one thing you can just type here, reset button, and the input is going to be connected here like this, or what you can do, you can connect this contact here like this, and the code is going to do exactly the same, but it just looks slightly different. So let's save it. Let's make a download to the PLC. And let's see how it behaves. One more thing, let's have a look what's, what's going on in the code. Every time I press the CU button, count up button, this counter is incrementing and it's only reacting on the rising edge of this input. If you don't remember about the edges, have a look at the previous video. Anyway, this input only reacts for this signal once. I press it again. Let's count up to five and see what happens. Oh, it didn't, it didn't catch it. One thing about working with factory IO, the PLC will not always catch input from factory IO. This is because it's just a simulation. So it's, uh, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for our purposes. And now the last time I press here, the counter value is five. So it reached this value, the PV. And what happened? The output lit up. So now it's blue. And now whatever I do here, the counter value is still increasing, but nothing is going to change. So the counter value will keep rising until over 32,000, but nothing else is changing. What can I do now? Let's press the reset button. The reset button sets the counter value back to zero. And anytime I press the reset button, the value of the counter goes to zero. So this is how the counter up uh, works. You can count some elements there or iterations of your sequence runs or, uh, or whatever you need it for. This is how counter up works. So now I will show you how counter down works. It's also very simple and of course we also need another IDG for that. I like to give this I there. So LD, this input means load value. You will see what it's for in a second. So we don't have the reset input anymore. We have an LD input right now. So CD button load button. 
I'm going to use this one and oil here counter down light and I don't need this counter anymore so I'm just going to delete it so now we can focus on the counter down so save the project download to the PLC and what we've got now the counter value equals zero right now okay so just like it was in the beginning but what happens if I press the load button the counter value became five the PV here okay so every time this input comes the counter will get the value of PV and now this is a countdown so every time I will press the countdown button the value of the counter will increase and once it reaches zero and goes below zero the counter down light will lit up so let's go down to zero and there we are counter down light lit up we can go we can go down Okay, so we've got a discrepancy here because factor IO is showing 65,529 and counter value in the PLC is minus seven. Why is that? It's because how we write the negative numbers in binary system. You can research the topic a little bit. It's a very broad topic from computer science. I'm not going to explain it in this tutorial, but you can go in depth a bit more about it just search Google search negative numbers, negative binary numbers, and you will get the answer for that. Back to our program. Whenever I press load, it's going to load the value again. So the counter is five again. This is how it works. It's very simple. And the last type of counter I want to show you is counter up and down. So the combination of these two counters it's also very 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 simple it just has more inputs and more outputs okay so cd Of course, I'm deleting this network and now again save and download to device. And now we have the full combination of both of them. Now as you see, counter down light is lighting because the, the counter value is zero and in the counter up down is exactly the same as in, in counter down. The countdown is finished when the counter value is zero or less. So let's count up a little bit. So we have one and counter down light disappeared. We can count up a little bit. It's five. Okay, counter up. Lead up. Let's go up. Now we're at eight. And now, what happens if I press the load button? Of course, it loaded the five. So it loaded five to the counter value. And if I press the reset button, of course, it loaded zero. Okay, so this is how the counter up down works. Counters are very simple and I think this concept is really basic and very intuitive and you have no problem to understand it. Of course, you have to exercise a bit. You have to write these programs by, by yourself. Maybe try some combination 
try to count something, make use factory IO, try to count the crates. So this is it for the counters. I'm planning one more video for this tutorial and then uh, I will also release some free videos in the future as well. But I also invite you to the website where you can learn more about, about the course I'm releasing. And of course, remember to, to go to our Facebook group, uh, join the group, ask the questions if you have some problems. If you see someone having some problem, maybe try to answer the question if you know the answer. And, and well, see you guys in the, in the next video.